okay now also the Bible talk about this is another proof the Bible talks about recent scientific findings proves that the Bible is God's Word so only recently that people know that the earth is not flat on some flat surface the earth is going around the Sun but in the past people thought that it's the earth is flat on some flat surface but the Bible already knew that that the earth is not lying on some flat surface is hanging in midair in nothing Job 26 7 he stretches out the north over empty space he hangs the earth on nothing now that was 3,000 years before Christ at that time nobody knew that the earth was hanging on nothing but the Bible already said that the earth was hanging on nothing and Isaiah 40 22 it is he who sits above the circle of the earth so here it talks about the earth is not square it is like a circle it's like a, 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 a round thing a sphere so all ancient people think that the earth is flat and sitting on something solid but Job said that the earth is hanging on nothing and this does not make sense to the people in ancient times so people would not understand how can something be hanging on nothing they don't understand that and Isaiah said that the earth is like a circle instead of being flat that is like a, 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 a sphere it's not f square and then the Bible talks about our cell phones Job 38 35 is very useful can you send out lightnings that they may go and say to you here we are now our cell phones actually is using electricity and lightnings are actually electricity but it's very powerful and cell phone use a very small portion of a lightning but in the ancient time there was no electricity so God used lightning to describe electricity so here God said to Job can you send out lightnings that they may go and then say to you here we are can you send out electrical signal and tell you we are here so here is uh, fulfilled only by the cell phones not by the cable you know in the past there was cable that you can send to people but when you send cables you don't say I'm here uh, unless sometimes you say okay I'm I'm now in Kenya I'm in this country uh, in a big place but in a cell phone you can say I have arrived at the village I have arrived on what street we can tell them what street are we on I'm I'm in the airport so we can tell them exactly where we are so this is fulfilled more accurately by the cell phone which we can tell exactly where we are when we are talking on the cell phone in ancient times there was no commercial electricity God uses lightning to describe electricity lightnings are made up of electricity today we can use electricity to in cell phones to send out messages to people and many people send messages like here we are on this certain street Job could say something that agrees with technological equipment today so Job did not understand that it actually is not Job it's God who said to him can you send out lightnings and tell them here we are but we know that we cannot you know uh, in the past they said no we cannot do it but now we know that it's possible so God already knew that that there will be cell phones that we can use electricity to send out to people and say here we are so this is interesting thing and it is very useful to tell people how accurate the Bible is and then the next proof so the first proof are the prophecy second are the scientific proofs and the third are that we can experience the work of the Holy Spirit that shows that God is real right here God is alive right here he can do things now we have talked about this before we don't go through this in detail now that we can experience his peace and the burdens go away all you who are labor and a burden 
come to me and I'll give you rest so Jesus can take away our burdens many people experience the lightness of the heart the burdens being removed from the heart and the body in rest and comfort Psalm 16 verse 9 therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices my flesh also will rest in hope so my body can rest in hope and love we can experience love Romans 5 5 because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us so we can experience God's love and then inner healing Isaiah 61 1 he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted so God can heal the brokenhearted and physical healing Isaiah 55 5 by his stripes we are healed and demons being driven out Mark 16 17 in my name to cast out demons so no other religion that people can experience blessings like this now witchcraft can bring some work to people but witchcraft will also bring destruction at the same time witchcraft will bring seemingly some good things some healing but then they will also bring in other problems other sickness and bondage and anger and frustration and all kinds of problems so there is no other uh, you know in the world this, as far as supernatural power there's only God and Satan God and Satan can both produce supernatural work but God's supernatural work is comforting is full of love full of blessings but Satan's supernatural work brings curses brings problems so now there are different religions that people contact the evil spirit for power that witchcraft Satanism and different religions that they can have power but this power will bring a price to the person the person will suffer so it shows that in this world there are two um, sources of power now actually it's one Satan also has his power from God now we can see power from God and also power from Satan but the power of Satan also came from God and power of Satan will also bring destruction to people so from this we know that God is real so when we pray for people and they experience the work of God and then we tell them God is real that's why you can experience him that's why God is blessing you so if God can bless you like this you want to believe in Jesus and ask them to believe in Jesus so when we know that wow God is so real so we know that uh, the Bible is God's word and there's really heaven and hell okay and then the next point is about evil spirit many people experience evil spirits and this proves that evil spirits are real and Christians having ability to drive out demons in Jesus name proves that Jesus is God that many people especially in Africa you probably have heard of many people they have evil spirit and then Christians can cast out the evil spirit in Jesus name shows that Jesus is God so many people who practice transcendental meditation witchcraft contact with evil spirit would voodoo Satanism and many other occult practices have testified the reality of evil spirits and there are many online testimonies of people experiencing evil spirit there are many people who, who share that the new age movement many people meditate and then they thought it's for their good but then they experience the evil uh, evil spirit coming to them when they meditate uh, when they the, the soul leave the body and then they see evil spirit and then the presence of evil spirit proves the reality of God because this beautiful and wonderful world cannot be created by evil spirit so the fact that there are evil spirit proves that there is God because evil spirit cannot create babies so wonderful so beautiful so happy so joyful and all the beautiful nature it has to be created by a pure God a loving God a kind God an artistic God and Satan and the evil spirit are never artistic they're always destructive and ugly and terrible and three Christians can drive out evil spirit in Jesus name proves that Jesus is God and has authority over the demons 
Okay, E. Many people die and came back to life and could describe things that happened after they died. This proves that we have souls. Many people testify that they went to heaven or hell and their lives are greatly changed. Some of these experiences prove that God, heaven, and hell are real. So many people die and came back to life and, and they can describe what happened to them after the death and what happened to the people around them after the death. So it shows that the soul ex exists after the death. And then many people testify that after the death they went to hell or heaven and then their life was greatly changed. Okay, these experiences are generally called near-death experience, NDEs. But these people have actually died and some have died for a long period of time. So it's really not near-death, it's really death experience, death and coming back. There have been scientific studies of these people. There are people who study this. When there are people who are about to die, the scientists knew that some patients would die in certain surgeries and they sealed up the eyes and the ears of these people and recorded the whole process. When a patient was resuscitated, they could describe, the patients could describe what happened in the room after the death. Now there are videos like that. You look for in BBC, the British Broadcasting Company, they have uh, uh, the, the, they have a video, they have more than one video, different videos recording people going through death and then there are people who study and recorded the process to, find, uh, to realize that people, they don't lose the uh, consciousness after death. They know what happened around them after the death. And then three, some of these people who died went to heaven and saw Christians who died before them. And they could later describe certain things about these Christians who died before them, which they did not know beforehand. This proves that they really saw the Christians who died before them, and proves that Christians do go to heaven. Uh, there are different proofs for my. Uh, there is a famous story about a child. Uh, this is a real uh, story. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, I think the book is called Heaven is Real. And uh, the little boy, four, about four year old, he had a surgery and then he died. And then he went to heaven and sit on Jesus' lap. And then also uh, he saw a uh, young girl who came to him and said, I'm your sister. And uh, told him that she died in the womb of her mother and uh, so the child came back and then you know and then one day he told his mother I have another sister and the mother said yes you have one sister who is living and he said no there's another one who died in your womb and the mother was very you know shocked actually when he said I have another sister. The mother was already shot, and then he just walked out of the room. And then the mother told her, come back. When you say something like this, you don't walk away. What happened? What, you have one sister. What, what, do you, what are you talking about? He, uh, he said, there is another sister I saw in heaven. And then she came to me and kept hugging me. The boy said, he, she kept hugging me. And, uh, and she said that she died in your womb. And uh, so now this boy didn't know that. So this is one story. And then the, this boy also said, I saw the great grandfather, the grandfather of the father, of his father. And then he can describe him. And then also uh, he had never saw his great grandfather. And then they searched and found the great grandfather's pictures and show him. And then he said, yes, that's him. Because in heaven, everyone was young again. So he saw the young great-grandfather. Now for me, I videotaped three persons. I mean, sorry. One person who goes, you know, who went to heaven and saw different things and came back and talked to three different families. Okay. Now this, 
woman I talked to is a woman minister who pray a lot and she went to you know she waited on the Lord for a long time at the beginning for three hours every day for years after one year Jesus took her to heaven and uh, saw different things in heaven and she told me about it and then she said uh, she saw three you know the uh, you know that what she saw is related to three families first she saw uh, a man who served in the church of her mother because her mother is also a minister the couple helped in a church in doing different chores in the church and the husband died and went to heaven and then she went to heaven and saw him and then he told uh, this uh, woman minister uh, she's her name is uh, Wong so she told her uh, to come back you know uh, to tell her his wife tell her to pray a lot and serve God with diligence and then he also told her your mother has been talking about you in a very nice way he your mother has complimented you in many ways to us he's she's very proud of you now this woman minister never knew that she thought that her mother doesn't like her because her mother never said that she liked her and so she came back and asked the wife is it true that you my mother has always told you about me and was proud of me and the woman said yes and then you know and then uh, this minister uh, woman minister told her about that she saw this man in heaven and this man told her to tell the uh, the wife to serve God and pray more and also uh, told her that that her mother has said many good things about her in front of the couple and then the, the mother uh, agreed that this is true and so I recorded that interview and then there was another another lady the father was about to die and then they called this woman minister and by the time she went to the hospital he has already died and the moment she prayed this woman minister prayed she saw this dead man's spirit and he was between two angels and he was very happy and he told the woman minister uh, we can call her Miss Wong okay Miss Wong told Miss Wong tell my daughter uh, my family members I'm very happy don't worry about me I'm very happy now and the second thing he told Miss Wong to tell uh, to, to tell his daughter tell my daughter I'm very happy with your marriage and uh, so Miss Wong told his daughter your father said he's very happy he's with two angels now you don't have to worry about him don't cry for him and the second thing is he said he's very happy with your marriage and the moment she said that the daughter said you must have seen him because this is something he said to me and no one outside the family knew that, knew it and you knew it so you must have seen him so um, so that proves that she really saw the the spirit of this man and then another time she prayed and then went up to heaven and saw this man again and there was a buffet of fruits and he was eating he has he has fruits in both of his hands and he was eating happily and then he said if you give me 1000 years more I will not give up heaven I will not stay on earth 1000 years and not coming to heaven now and so she came back Miss Wong came back and told um, the daughter your father said that your father was very happy eating the fruit and the daughter said yes he was very happy eating the fruit because he has diabetes so he cannot eat fruit and now in heaven he can eat fruit so he's very happy the second thing is Miss Wong said he said that if 
he was given a thousand years he would not stay on earth and the daughter said you must have seen him because this is the way how he talks he always said if you give me a thousand years I will not do it if you give me a thousand years I, I will not you know uh, take it so this is his expression so this Miss Wong uh, also heard this from him okay and then the third thing that Miss Wong uh, went to heaven and then Jesus told him told her you have to repent for your uh, ancestors he has killed many people and so she prayed for forgiveness of her ancestors and then uh, she came back and asked her mother um, Jesus told me that my ancestor has killed many people uh, so how did it happen and the mother told told her your great-grandfather was a uh, what do you call it? someone who betrayed China when Japan came to attack China he betrayed China and got a gun from the Japanese and sometimes he took the gun and kill people or steal from people and do different bad things and so he was the one who has hurt people and killed people and so Miss Wong also knew this from heaven so I'm just telling you that uh, there are different people who have gone to heaven and they saw things that they should not have known to prove that heaven is real so we can tell people heaven is really real so we really want to believe in Jesus to have eternal life and follow Jesus and also hell is also very real so number four here some people who die who went to hell the changed life supports that they really went to hell that these people went to heaven or hell and their life is changed now hell is millions of times more terrible than the suffering on earth the pain there the heats there the suffering there the hopelessness there is terrible it's very very painful so people thought they commit suicide to be relieved from pain they actually get into more pain forever and ever no stopping so we can tell people if they don't have Jesus as a savior or if they believe in Jesus and don't follow Jesus they will go to hell and suffer there forever and ever being burned there forever being tortured by demons and tortured by the uh, uh, insects the bugs will not die you know Jesus said that in heaven I mean in hell the fire will not cease the bugs will not die so there it will be terrible so never never go to heaven so all this proves that God is real and 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 heaven is real and hell is also real so this will help us to testify to people to let people know that God is real and also for Christians we know that God is real everything we've done will be shown by God nothing is hidden from him in a judgment seat everything we've done will be shown to the whole world so as Christian we want to repent of all our sins and ask God to forgive us and set us free from all the sins so that we will not be you know uh, affected by the sins or punished for the sins and ask God to forgive us and really hate sins and not to commit sins anymore now even when Christians ask God's forgiveness still there can be destructiveness and consequences of sins because when we sin it will hurt interpersonal relationship it will hurt our conscience it will hurt our relationship with God it will bring destruction to our life it will bring destruction to family to church members to church relationship to our ministry to our whole life and God is not pleased with our life and then our ministry will be in vain so it's foolishness is foolish to sin and to serve God if we serve God if we sin we ask God to forgive us and hate sins and turn away from sin and and uh, obey God and follow God it's very very important to follow God and obey God and uh, if you know God used to give me this illustration we are building on the foundation of Jesus Christ we're building a building with our ministry is like building a building but if we sin 
we build and then we tear down. We build and tear down. And what is the point of doing that? If we serve God, we trust in God totally. He will bless us. He will bless our ministry. He will bless us today and forever. He will bless us in this life and forever. So it's wise to serve God totally, wholeheartedly, without committing sins and without lust. When we serve God and when we look at beautiful women and have lust, that's also sin and that destroys our conscience and, and it ruins our relationship with God. So we don't want to be ruined our ministry and our life. We don't want it to be ruined by women, by lust, by money, by power, the hunger for power. We want to ask God to forgive us and that we hate sin and want to live a holy life. And to live a holy life is joyful and peaceful. Now, if we fail, we ask God to forgive and then we fight the sins and say no to sins and don't want to sin anymore and run away from temptation. So I ask God to help us all to really face God and to be uh, very honest and sincere in our ministry, realizing that all our hidden things will be shown by God. Nothing can escape His eyes. He will see everything. There is no way to run away from God. Okay, we'll close with the prayer. We ask God to bless us. Lord Jesus, we thank you because you are real. You are living God. And we can experience your peace and love and joy. And many people have experienced heaven or hell. We know that this is real. And there are so many testimonies online of people who went to hell, heaven or hell. Please help us to believe in you and trust in you and obey you and follow you and serve you with joy and gladness and know that you really are happy with anything we do with a pure heart. Anything we do for you with a pure heart, you'll be very happy and you'll bless us. Help us to be faithful servant. Help us to serve you with no burdens because it's you who is responsible for everything. You are responsible for the results. So we can trust in you and relax in you and enjoy our ministry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I want to say one more thing about NDE, near-death experiences. Online there are many NDE. There are many people who die and then they saw Jesus and Jesus told them, you know, that they have to believe in Jesus and follow Jesus and trust in Jesus as the Savior. But there are people also who die and then they have near-death experience and they went to heaven or they saw Jesus, uh, they saw a bright person, but they don't believe in Jesus. They don't, and after they came back, they don't believe in Jesus. And um, so these people say that we, they don't have to believe in Jesus. When, after they die, they will go to heaven automatically. Now this is a lie because um, now there could be different explanation of these people. They die and they saw Jesus, but then they um, uh, they thought it's not necessary to believe in Jesus. They thought so it's the belief that affect the the um, the thinking. Now there are many people who did not believe in Jesus, and then they saw heaven or hell, and then they really believe in Jesus afterwards. But there are people who we don't. But we don't want to be affected by these people because sometimes maybe these people have just a short time, they just have a short time experience and then uh, they feel very light when they leave the body and then they didn't have the chance to go to hell yet. So they think dying is no, no pain. Dying is just relief from the pain. They didn't realize that if they stay longer they will go to hell. They didn't realize that. So um, so we realize that online there are experiences like that. And then, uh, but because the Bible has so many proofs, so we know that God is real. And there are overwhelming number of people who went to heaven and hell and they came back and they are devoted Christians. Uh, it's only some people who think that they don't need to believe in Jesus and then they die, everything will be fine. So, it's, so I, I let you know that there are some videos like that online about people who think that uh, dying will be fine. Everyone will go to heaven. Okay, God bless you and I hope you realize that God is very real and God will always bless us when we trust in Him and follow Him and obey Him. Okay, God be with you.